Hi, and welcome to Keith Mason Photography, where we delve into tips and tricks to help you become a better photographer. In this video, I'm going to tell you 10 things that I learned about landscape photography in 2020. Let's get into it. So in this video, we're going to show you 10 things that I've learned as a landscape photographer in 2020. And the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the um, selective graduated filter. And um, here, if we look in the uh, in Lightroom, and I'm working in Lightroom today, um, and you go into the develop mode and pick a graduated filter. Um, the, the challenge in this picture is that there is quite a the, the sky is quite bright the foreground is is rather dark so we want to try and even that out and bring out some of the details in the uh, sky but the problem with a lot of um, graduated filters is that when you get to the horizon there are things that interrupt um, what you might want to do with the sky and so it's a challenge so this is uh, what I learned which is um, if you hold down the shift button and come down with your graduated filter. We'll move that down a little bit. If you come to the luminance um, range mask, you can see all of the um, areas which will be impacted by your filter. And you can change the amount of luminescence here. And so here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select the brighter parts of the sky and you can see that even though it's going to be covered under the, um, the filter this part along the horizon um, isn't affected and now when we turn the mask off you can see that I can change the amount of light in the sky but it's not impacting um, the foreground along the horizon so here um, what I'm going to do is going to build up um, the dehaze to try and get more contrast into the sky. Uh, I'm going to pull the contrast up um, and just going to bring the, the whites up a, a little bit. So we're now quite contrasty in the, in the sky. The second thing that I learned in 2020 was um, the challenge about going out with just one body and one lens and to try and force yourself to use that limited um, um, camera setup to really try and challenge your um, creativity. And uh, I used um, a single body, single lens a number of times during the year. And for example, uh, I um, took out just a uh, X-T20 and a 27mm lens uh, when I went on a hike from St Ives to Zena. Just having that simple uh, setup meant it was quite a challenge to try and find compositions that worked uh, for the setup that I had. So here we've got a uh, 20 odd pictures that I took that day. You can see it's an incredibly misty day. Um, and I tried to pick out uh, elements of the walk that would, I thought, tell a story of that day. So I embraced the mistiness and I tried to tell a story around me taking my backpack and, and walking. So um, I was particularly pleased with this image which I think tells a story of me um, with my backpack going through a style on this misty moor. Uh, in terms of trying to tell a story around uh, hiking, uh, I used the boardwalk as a leading light, uh, a leading line um, to indicate me walking along this horizon and actually um, in terms of the mistiness it really helped in this particular image. So single lens, single camera, constrain yourself uh, and uh, you can become creative or become more creative. Uh, it really helps you to rather than thrashing around in your camera bag to try and find something more interesting to shoot within the limitations of what you've got. The third thing that I learned uh, this year was the circular filter. 
uh, in Lightroom. And it's an incredibly useful tool, particularly for dodging and burning particular areas within your uh, image. So if we come back to this picture of the, um, the boats at dawn in St. Ives, and I use the circular filter here, or radial filter, to really try and pick out details. So here, I've tried to pick out details in um, this yacht. I've raised the exposure quite a lot. Um, I've brought up the shadows a, a little bit. And you can see now, you can see much more detail um, uh, in the dinghy. And I, I think that works quite well. I'm going to pull the, the blacks down a little bit just to try and emphasize the uh, reflections here. Once I'm happy with uh, one of these circular filters, you can um, duplicate them and use them in other parts of your image. And I've used that quite a lot in uh, a bunch of my photography. So it's, a, it's an interesting thing to have learned this year. So that's, that's the radial filter. And it's really good, as I said, just for dodging and burning. The fourth thing I learned this year, uh, or tried to learn this year, and it's right at the end of this year, um, was to um, pick up uh, the technique of uh, intentional camera movement. And I've always been inspired by um, images that evoke the idea of wave movement without really seeing um, the, the waves. And so um, when I found myself on um, Marazion Beach uh, and it was quite late in the evening that the sun was just setting uh, and I slowed everything uh, down in the camera, slowed the shutter speed down um, and just um, to a point where I had an, a sort of a half a second exposure and just moved the camera a little bit as I uh, shot the picture moving uh, horizontally from left to right or from, or from right to left to get this sort of uh, effect where you know you're looking at a beach at sunset but you can't see the detail and I thought that worked really well and I hope to use more of that in 2021. The fifth technique that I uh, learned this year in the uh, in Lightroom was using dehaze uh, in a reverse way to try and even out really sharp, uh, sorry to even out um, the brightness of the sun at sunset. And um, I took this shot on the same day as I was walking along the beach in the um, in Mara Zion, uh, the same sunset. Uh, and you can see here that there isn't a lot of detail in the um, in the sunset uh, around here because the there is just a little bit too much light and brightness in that part of the um, that part of the image. So I've taken uh, the circular filter that I've uh, learnt in <laughs> also this year and I've taken quite a large filter there. Uh, I don't want to increase the exposure but see what happens when you reduce the dehaze. So you're essentially adding haze into the image and if you just really reduce the exposure at the same time, you really bring back details uh, into the horizon, you increase the contrast a little bit and you get a little bit more colour um, and you can actually push up the uh, saturation just a tiny bit to really get this great feeling uh, uh, of the sunset. So that's it, um, using dehaze as a negative dehaze uh, to try and bring back detail uh, for really overexposed um, uh, sunset um, images. The next thing that I want to talk about is using an ultra wide uh, lens. I started this year, I got my X-T3 and when I got the X-T3 I also bought a 10 to, 20, uh, 10 to 24 mil ultra wide lens. Um, and it's the first time I've really used a wide lens and it's been really challenging. 
the effect that you get is really interesting. Obviously, as a landscape photographer, being able to open up your uh, view to uh, capture more and more of the vista is really useful. Uh, and it really helps you to uh, really try and capture the, the scene that you're seeing. But the problem is, um, there are two problems essentially. One which is the further wide you get, um, the edges of the image uh, the perspective is is impacted and I'm going to come back to that in a second. And the other thing is that um, things in the foreground can be increased um, through um, forced perspective uh, and the um, things in the background are diminished by the same effect. So being able to uh, take what I've learnt in terms of composition prior to getting the, the wide angled lens, I'm really trying to relearn and although I've had some, I think, successes um, this year, um, trying to work on composition using that wide angled lens has been a challenge for me. And so I'm gonna keep on trying to learn that in 2021. The seventh thing that I've learned this year is about being able to correct perspective. And this is really tied back to the use of the wide angled lens. And you can see here in this um, street picture that I took in Venice uh, when I was lucky enough to go in October is that you can see that the, um, the building looks like it's um, falling back um, because of the perspective created by the wide angled lens. You can correct for that in Lightroom uh, using the transform uh, uh, using the transform effect. And here, if you take the vertical transform, you can really <laughs> make some great changes here. But I think somewhere around this um, makes a really impactful impact uh, sorry and it makes a impactful edit on your picture such that it looks far more real because your brain normally corrects for those um, forced perspectives that you um, that you see um, and here um, I think we get a much more realistic sort of image because we've corrected for that perspective the eighth thing that I've learned this year is that you really should revisit your archives. Now I've been taking photos for a long time and I've stored all of my raw files from about 2006 forward um, in the cloud um, and when we were moved into the first lockdown uh, in April, May, uh, I started posting a picture a day from my archive and what that meant is that because we were locked down for such a long, long time I kept on having to go back to look into my archive and I found some pictures there that I'd forgotten about I found some pictures there which I'd overlooked in the first place and I think the one that I want to show you now is one that I've now printed put on my wall um, at the time I rejected it because lens flare really um, isn't the place for, for uh, landscape photographers but there is something around um, this particular image of um, Yosemite from Glacier Point, uh, which I took at sunrise, where um, although I have lens flare across it, it really captures the beginning of the day. And it's, to my mind, a far better picture than the one that I processed and picked out at the time, which I'll show you um, now. Um, to me, the one with the lens flare just sort of evokes more about the start of the day. So what I learned is that you should never discard pictures overall and you should go back and revisit them from time to time to see if you threw out a, a good one. The ninth thing that I learned this year is the importance of tripod technique. And I've got to say that either my tripod is faulty or I am guilty of not setting it up properly because when I was down in Cornwall at the beginning of December, <clears throat> my X-T3 was sitting on the tripod. I was turning around, I was going to uh, grab a lens to change the lens. The lens, the leg of the tripod collapsed and the camera fell uh, down, hit some cobbles uh, and captured some seawater and I sent it off to Fuji and it's, it cannot be repaired. 
So currently, at the end of uh, 2020, I have an insurance claim to try and um, be able to replace my, my camera at the beginning of 2021. But the lesson that I've taken away from it is that you really have to work on your tripod technique. And something that I, <clears throat> I saw online, which is as you, um, as you concentrate on securing the legs of your tripod, once you've finished, push the end of your tripod leg to make sure that all of these sections are securely fastened before you put your camera on. The tenth thing that I've learned this year is about mindset. The first thing around mindset is unless you go out to take photographs, you are not going to get photographs. So decide that you're going to get up, get out, whatever you think the weather might be. You may not have the best, best weather forecasts and actually the, um, the process of getting up for a sunrise shoot, getting out is good for the soul even if you don't get a great picture. Which brings me on to the next part of mindset is you always will have one picture that get a, gets away from you. And you have to sort of get into your mindset that sometimes it's okay to let one get away. It helps you to feel good about your photography if you are resigned to the fact that somewhere someone is getting a better picture than you and it doesn't really matter. Which brings me on to the last point around mindset, which is a little bit cod philosophy, which is only you can get your best picture. Personal bests are by def definition personal. And however good uh, other people are at photography, your journey in photography is about yourself. And for me, if I can be a better photographer in 2021 than I was in 2020, that's good enough for me. So I'm going to leave you today with what I consider to be my 12 best landscape photographs uh, and hope that you're going to rejoin me in 2021 when we're going to delve into more tips and tricks around how to improve your photography. So if you've liked this video, I'd really appreciate it if you like and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in 2021. Mm -hmm.